أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي ليس لأوليته ابتداء ولا لأزليته انقضاء ونحسرة الأوصاف عن كنه معرفته وردعت عظمته العقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد البطحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولولاه لساخت الأرض بأهلها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم أم يحسدون الناس على ما آتاهم آتاهم الله من فضله صلوات We were discussing in that previous Thursday about the divine value system and we talked about a series of uh, values and to to get an idea about what exactly we we mean when we talk about the value system of Islam and tonight is today is the turn for discussing about the hasad the concept of hasad we have two things in our Islamic morality one is called hasad and the other one is called ghibta and the difference between hasad and ghibta is defined as in hasad and jealousy a person wants in his heart zawal ni'ma min al ghair that means the ni'mat of Allah no longer remains with someone. So this person who is hasid and jealous, when he looks at some ni'mat found with somebody, he does not tolerate it. He wants that ni'mat of Allah to be removed from this person. This is what we call hasad and jealousy whereas ghibta in the Islamic morality means that when you look as the ni'mat and blessing Allah has given to someone you do not wish in your heart that ni'mat that blessing is taken away from that person instead you wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the similar blessing the way he has given to that person. This is a very good thing. This is actually appreciated. This is something that we need to do. Whenever we look at the blessings around us, you know, we need to basically thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah, He is the source of all the blessings and we pray to Allah, we turn towards Him that He provides us the same blessings, similar blessings the way He gave to others. Which obviously um, makes ourselves, should make ourselves to think that we need to make ourselves ahl and deserving to receive the blessings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the blessings according to our ahliyyat, how much we deserve. 
the one who the same Allah who is even sending his adab based on ahliyat and adl and justice is in a right yaman adabuhu adlun la yaman la yukhafu illa adluhu O oh, you whose punishment is is justice so jahannam and hellfire is the mazhar and reflection of the justice of God there is no injustice going on against anybody and the hellfire is nothing but justice being served these people deserve that they ask for it so basically the the same Allah who does justice when punishing why wouldn't he do justice when he's blessing with his blessings so Allah always does justice isn't it right so Allah does the justice and um, um, so basically uh, whatever is just Allah performs that so uh, we need to be uh, careful about the evil attribute of hasad that we are discussing this is regarded as one of those al-ma'asi al-qalbiya as one of the sins which are related to the heart we have sins related to several parts of the body in the right sins related to the eyes sins related to the hands sins related to the tongue which are the largest in number 46 approximately sins related to the feet in the right sins related to the private parts sins related to the stomach sins related to the ears and sins related to our qalb the heart the soul that means even and this is one of the examples of the ones which are in the heart so even inside our heart we're not doing anything practically and physically we're not using our hands and feet or walking around or going physically somewhere isn't it right to do something practically with the parts and limbs of our body we are staying in our home let's suppose but even if you are staying at home even deep down in your heart if you have hasad and jealousy and envy towards someone who has a blessing of Allah given to him and you wish in your heart that I wish that blessing no longer stays with him so this is something un-Islamic and this is something which is a big haram it's a greater bigger sin and this is something which is condemned aqlan and sharan so um, uh, the problem uh, 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 related to the uh, to the sins of the qalb whenever we are dealing with the sins related to the qalb and heart and the soul of the person this can only be addressed and resolved through knowledge and ilm and amal through knowledge and practicing so we need to first of all we need to first of all increase in our knowledge a hasid a person who is jealous having jealousy or envy towards someone must understand first of all the process the blessings are given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he understands the process if he increases in knowledge towards this matter it will help him to eradicate this spiritual illness first of all we need to increase our knowledge by understanding how a blessing a ni'mat comes and why so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his ni'mat based on how a person or a, a something deserves to get it we don't believe in qismat nasib there is no room in qaf qismat and naseeb in islam we believe in qada and qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qismat is an un-islamic belief this is my qismat this is my fortune <laughs> there is no fortune and there is nothing fortunate and nothing unfortunate in islam this is an un-islamic conversation in islam we do not believe in qismat and naseeb we believe in qada and qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is based on al-hikmatul mutlaqa absolute wisdom of god and his hikmat al-mutlaqa his absolute wisdom is nothing but his knowledge which is absolute because hikmat is ayna zat this sifat and attribute of allah is nothing but his essence and ilm likewise is anazat so his hikmat is basically 
nothing but his knowledge and his knowledge is nothing but his hikmat and they are both part of his not part of his they are nothing but his zat so his zat and hikmat is one and the same thing his zat and knowledge is one and the same thing not part of it that's an incorrect statement so we need to first understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides the nikmats based on his absolute wisdom so wishing in heart towards somebody to re- that the nikmat gets removed it's not going to take us anywhere do we does the hasid person thinks that by wishing in his heart he can make a difference are you calling the shots are you the one who provides the nikmat to anybody in the universe or takes away the nikmat from somebody you neither we neither provide the nikmat nor we can take away the nikmat and then right is allah who provides and allah who takes our naf and zarar our benefit and harm in our islamic belief system is in the hands of allah only not the humans no human can benefit you if allah doesn't wish and no human can harm you if allah does not wish and if allah has wished and willed for that harm to happen then nobody can block it so basically uh, hasid is wasting his time because by wishing in his heart he cannot make a difference he cannot change it he cannot alter he cannot remove the nikmat uh, from that person so sending laanat curse on somebody is even a further sign of himaqat and silliness if anyone sends a laanat on any person who does not deserve it this is the sign of himaqat and silliness and jahl we, we will come to the laanat concept inshallah very soon as we are moving towards various values of islamic akhlaq one by one in the thursday nights So but I'll, because I just mentioned laanat so I'll just say one thing and move forward that in the concept of laanat we learn in the light of the hadith of ahlul bayt alaihim assalam if a person sends the laanat on somebody and that somebody does not deserve what happens is that when the laanat the curse is said the laanat is raised up and then it first of all if the person who sends the lanat he deserves that kind of lanat himself the lanat first and foremost returns back to himself if he does not deserve the lanat then it goes to the person who deserves it so there is no if we cannot play with allah's wisdom you know there is no room for emotions in islam there is no room for anyone to manipulate the divine absolute wisdom it's going to happen the way it's going to happen according to his wisdom so even you know going one step farther and sending laanat which is one step beyond having the hasad is not going to resolve nothing because the laanat will return back to the laen to the one who is cursing it will return back to him if he deserves that so what requires is that a hasid scholars of akhlaq say the hasid and jealous person should increase in his knowledge understand the process of how a nikmat and blessing is awarded by allah to somebody based on the qada and qadar not the qismat not fortune not something suddenly taking place ittifaqan we don't believe in ittifaq in islam nothing is coincidental then nothing in the universe is happening coincidentally everything even a leaf is falling down according to allah's wisdom when and where and how much something needs to happen so we need to understand the qada and qadar and uh, that will help him understand the process of nikmat so hasid is we realize that hasid is basically harming no one else but his own self he is not harming the mahsud the person he is jealous about is called mahsud the mahsud person does not receive any harm from the hasid so even if he has whatever feelings towards him he is not going to alter the situation of the mahsud the person about whom he is feeling the jealousy so hasad increases in his own pain in his own azab in his own punishment he is punishing his own self in his own hum and gham that means sorrow 
and uh, his own hardships. So, Am yahsudun al nasa ala ma atahum Allah min fadli. This is from Surah Al Nisa, verse fifty-four, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, you know, uh, in other words, balke that they are having jealousy towards the people, an nas ala ma atahum Allah min fadli upon what Allah gave him from his fadl. So nas here, people. Having jealousy against towards the people. People is interpreted in the tafsir by our fuqaha, our mufassirin, as the prophet and his family. Please say salawat. So, Allah subhanahu wa taala has given from his fadl to you know to to them. So, and uh, there are people who are exercising hasad towards the prophet and his family. So, Allah subhanahu wa taala sent His wahi. Allah sent His wahi to Prophet Musa. Yabna Imran, la tahsud, la tahsud al nas ala ma ataytuhum min fadli, wa la tamudanna aynika ila dalika. Don't have hasad towards the people for you know what I gave to them from my fadl, and don't uh, basically. I don't focus, don't have your eyes towards that. In other words, وَلَا تَتْبَعُهُ نَفْسُكَ فَإِنَّ الْحَاسِدَ سَاخِطٌ لِلنِّعَمِ صَادٌ لِقِسْمِ الَّذِي قَسَمْتُ بَيْنَ عِبَادِي So the hasid person is is angry, is showing his anger, he's doing his anger over my ni'mats, my blessings. And he's blocking uh, Allah's distribution that He distributed between His slaves, His servants. So, so we find that um, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, "That Allah la tu'adu ni'am Allah." His Prophet is warning the ashab. And this hadith, obviously, uh, you know, is applicable in terms of its mafhum to all of us. You know, till the day of judgment, the teachings of Rasulullah are equally applicable to all the masadiq. So, who, you know, uh, fall in that category. So, we, we are also supposed to do the same. Don't have enmity towards the blessings of Allah. Qila ya Rasulullah wa man alladhi yu'adi ni'am Allah. Somebody asked the Prophet, who is the person who is having enmity towards the blessings of Allah? And Prophet replied, Alladheena yahsudun. Those people who have hasad. So people who have hasad basically are having enmity and adawat towards Allah's blessings. So Imam Ali wasalam says, uh, so there are three ahadiths here. Al Hasudu Ghadbanun al Al Qadar. That means a Hasid person is angry over the Qadar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like a few minutes ago I mentioned that ni'mats are given according to the Qadar and Qadar of Allah. Divine destiny and divine decision. So Al Hasadu Sharr al Amrad. Hasad is the worst of all the illnesses. Al-Hasidu la yashfihe illa zawalun ni'ma Nothing can cure the Hasid person except when the ni'mat is gone. So basically we know the ni'mat is not going to be gone. Allah is the one who is providing the ni'mat. So ni'mat is going to stay with everyone as long as the person is ahal for that and deserving for that ni'mat. So the Hasid is going to constantly punish his own self because his cure is the zawal of the ni'mat and ni'mat is not going to go away. Isn't it right? So... Now let's go to the sifat of Hasid. In Ilm al akhlaq in the knowledge of Islamic morality, we learn that there are certain attributes that the Hasid person has. First, we learn from the light of the, and these are all ahadith that I have uh, in my mind to inform you. In Amir Mumi alayhi salam hadith, he says, Al Hasidu yafrahu bishar wa yaghtammu bis surur. That's the 
you know, f first sifat of the hasid. The first attribute of a jealous and hasid person is that he becomes happy over the shar, the evil. Isn't it right? So let's suppose somebody has lost a ni'mat. This person will become happy. And, uh, and he becomes uh, sorrowful, ghamzada, over the happiness of somebody. If somebody is happy because Allah has given him some ni'mat, this person is uh, sorrowful over that situation. This is the first sign of the, first sifat of the hasid. The second sign with which we recognize is, um, as al hasidu yara anna zawal ni'ma amman yahsuduhu ni'matun alayhi. The second sifat and attribute of the hasid is that he thinks that if the ni'mat is gone from that person, from that mahsud, this is going to add ni'mat for him. <laughs> How he believes. Although it's not going to add any ni'mat for him. So this is not going to happen. Third of all, al hasidu yuzhiru wuddahu fi aqwalihi wa yukhfi bugdahu fi af'alihi. This is how we recognize the Hasid person in the society that he will express his love in his statements and he will express his, uh, he will hide his uh, enmity in his actions. So the actions that he will do will have his enmity hidden in it but in his tongue he will have a sweet talk and he will continue to express his love. So this is what makes the Hasid person to fall in the category of Nifaq because his call and fail will be dual-sided. Isn't it right? His Hasid is so bad it will land us in the domain of Nifaq. And then Imam Ali Salam says that um, so yeah, and so the hadith didn't end. He says, وَيُخْفِي بُغْضَهُ فِي أَفْعَالِهِ فَلَهُ إِسْمُ الصَّدِيقِ وَصِفَةُ الْعَدُو So a Hasid person has the name of a friend, but the attribute of an enemy. I mean, his behavior is like an enemy's behavior, but he is, you know, he is dubbed in the society. He will be known as a friend because that's how he will have a sweet talk. So he'll have a name of a friend, but the attribute of the enemy. Then Imam Ibn Islam says, see, see, the, we are learning the signs how to recognize a hasid in the society. So then he says uh, that, um, well, this is not Imam Ali's hadith. This is what we is narrated that Qala Luqman li ibnihi, Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam. Um, said to his son, Lil Hasid Salasu Alamat. Hasid person has three signs. Yaghtabu idha ghaba. He will do ghibat when he's away. He's absent. That means away from that person. He's going to do ghibat. He'll talk bad. Well, talk bad. It is bad, but let's remember ghibat is always true. Isn't it right? It's never a lie. Because people say, you know, I'm not lying. He said that. Well, that's true. You're not lying, but still ghibat. Even if you're saying the ha the truth, even if you're saying a haq, but this is not, uh, you don't have the right to say the truth about a mu'min behind his back. It is true if you're saying, if you're saying a false statement, it would be worse. It would be tohmat. So ghibat is always true. But that doesn't give us a license to say every sip and truth everywhere where Allah did not allow us to say that. Ghibat is always true. So, yaghtabu idha ghaba, first sign of hasid, he'll do ghibat when he's absent, uh, when away from the mahsud, he's going to do the ghibat. Wiyatamallaku idha shahida, he's going to do tamalluq, chaplosi, when he's, you know, present. Wa yushmitu bil musiba. When a person is inflicted with a musibat, he is going to do shamatat. Shamatat means saying words of taunting that hurts the feeling of the person who is affected. So that's the third sign of the hasid person, in other words. Now let's, uh, after we have learned about the signs of the hasid, now let's move forward to the nata'ij. Nata'ij and asar. 
if a person has hasad in his spirituality there will be certain nataij and aftermaths of this spiritual illness and this is also we learn in the light of the ahadith of the ahlul bayt alaihim salam the first is azab and hasrat and taallum a person is causing punishment for his own self al hasad ahadul azabain amir al mumin alaihi salam says hasad is one of the two punishments ihtimal and the second punishment what he is talking about maybe the punishment in the akhirat which the hasad is certainly going to get unless if he performs tauba before death so this is the one of the two punishments that he is getting hasad itself is a punishment if a person has hasad this hasad itself is a punishment for his own self if he understands it is a punishment and al hasad utiyat al taab is the vehicle of exhausting yourself tiring up yourself if you are riding this vehicle of hasad you are bound to get tired and exhausted without getting any result in other words uh, but this is not part of the hadith i am explaining to you and al hasud kaseer al hasarat mutawaf al sayiat hasud person the third natija the third aftermath of having hasad uh, is that he will have lots of hasrat and repentances so see hasrat is the repentance that uh, we get when the time is gone that's called hasrat if the time is still there and you repent this is not called hasrat this is called nadamat nadamat is good because amir mumin alaihi salam has said in his hadith an nadm taubatun nadamat is tauba so if a person if god forbid if i sin and after sinning i have nadamat and repentance in my qalb the repentance itself is the tauba that's enough to be tauba because my true repentance will certainly force me to do the tauba with all of its eight conditions met and then right so repentance is tauba repentance is where you can fix the problem and hasrat is there where you are now unable to fix the problem it's already too late so hasrat one of the more than 100 names yawmul akhira the day of judgment has more than 100 names in islam and one of those more than 100 names is yawmul hasra and the day when the people will have hasrat well hasrat works two ways hasrat of fixing their harams and hasrat of doing the good deeds both i wish i had listened to the prophet i wish i had listened to the holy quran and didn't get fooled by the western freedom is my right is my i'm free to do what i wish to do so al hasud al kaseer al hasarat hasud person has lots of hasrats mutawaf al sayiat he has multiplied sins multi several folds of sins piling up over the other so every moment see say i remember i mentioned in the beginning of my speech that hasad is from the al maasi al qalbiya that means the Uh, uh, the sins which are heart based sins related to the heart and also in ilm al akhlaq our teachers say that uh, that hasad is also part of the al maasi al al aniya al daimiya not aniya we have maasi which are aniya that means it's a momentary sins you do it once and it's done Is that right? Is let's suppose God forbid somebody misses his his prayers and becomes qaba. This is a maasiyat which is aniya. One moment, you know, he did that sin, and after that, is done. Is he's not constantly repeating the sin. So it's a momentary category of sin, and maasiyatun aniya. And then the second category of sin is what we call al maasi al daimiya. The constant the permanent sins which are constantly 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 written in the book of deeds non stop there are certain sins which are non stop sins 
A person has done it once in his life only, not twice. But because the sin itself is a constant category of sin, so it is constantly written by the angel, this person is doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it, although he did it once. Because the sin itself falls in the category of the Ma'asi ad We must understand. Hasad is one of those sins. So if a person has hasad, so this is, uh, you know, is unless he does the tawbah, this, uh, you know, this is constantly increasing in his deeds. Uh, um, and then we find that uh, uh, Amir Mumni Salam says that Al Hasadu Yuzibul Jasad. That's another natija and asar and impact of Hasad. Hasad is going to melt down the body. Al Hasadu Yuzibul Jasad. It will melt down the body. What that means is going to affect your health, your physical health as well. A hasid person can never stay physically healthy. That's another impact of the hasid because his body will melt down and will be impacted with this spiritual illness. And also another hadith which he says, Al Hasudu Abadan Alil. Hasud is always ill. So, this is about first type of the nata'id. Now, let's move to the second. It is shaqa fi dunya wal akhira. Shaqawat means becoming stone-hearted or worse. If you're reaching a point, we have qasawatul qalb. A person becomes qasiyul qalb means stone-hearted or worse than that. And then a person moves forward in the sins without doing the tawbah. Still, he reaches the stage where it is called shaqawatul qalb. He becomes shaqiyul qalb. So, shaqawatul qalb is a stage of point of no return. So, hasad leads us towards the shaqawatul qalb in dunya and akhirat. See, mm, Amir Muni alayhi salam says, samaratul hasad shaqa'ud dunya wal akhira. I think the fruit, the result, the fruit of hasad is shaqawat uh, in dunya and akhirat. And uh, also, um, um, another impact of hasad as we are dis- discussing the nata'ij and impacts of asar of hasad is in khifadul manzila wa in hitatul martaba wa nufurul nas a person falling down and basically dropping from his status falling from his status and his uh, uh, position in the eyes of the community and uh, people ending up to hate him. This is one of the impacts of the hasad. When a person has hasad, he will drop down from his status in the society and he become hated person in the community. So, um, we find that in the hadith of Amir Mumin alayhi salam, he says that Bi'sar Rafiq al-Hasud, that the worst of the uh, companions First companion is the Hasud person. And uh, also he says, Man al hasada kanat lahu mahabbatan and the nas. Whoever quits the hasad, it will ha- he will have mahabbat and love in the eyes of the people, in other words. So this is uh, very uh, significant because every person in the society wants and wishes to be respected and loved in the eyes of the community. Isn't it right? So uh, one of the uh, factors that help us to get respected and, and keep our respect and keep our, the love in the eyes of people is to avoid the hasad. Well, obviously we are not doing it for the sake of the people. We do it for the qurbatan Allah, but this is one of the benefits that we are going to get. And uh, uh, the f- fifth harm that the hasad, fifth nati, bad impact that the hasad provides is the, the fact that a person is harming his own self and uh, uh, is basically depriving him from the 
from the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hasid mudurrun bi nafsihi qabla an yadurra bil mahsud ka iblis. So we find Imam al-Sadiq al-Islam says that the Hasid person harms, is harmful towards his own self before he can harm the mahsud like iblis. Awrasa bi hasadi li nafsihi al-la'nata wa li adama al-ijtiba. Iblis caused, caused la'nat and curse because of hasad for himself and for Adam alayhi salam al-ijtiba that means getting chosen. So Adam alayhi salam ended up becoming the chosen one and Iblis ended up becoming the cursed one. So he did not benefit his own self, isn't it right? He harmed his own self, he could not harm Hazrat Adam. So Obviously, uh, the prime cause of Iblis thrown out from the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was his hasad towards Adam and towards the nur of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt salam, which was found in the qalb of Prophet Adam when Allah blew into him the soul which was carrying the nur of Rasul and Ahlul Bayt salam. And also he showed the takabbur. So his his crime, he has two crimes. You know, he has two crimes, hasad and takabbur, which caused him to do the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next and the sixth impact as we are discussing the nata'ij and asar of hasad. The next impact is huzn and hum, being sorrowful and uh, you know becoming sorry and and in, in sorrow so uh, amir mumni alayhi salam says ma ra'aytu zaliman ashbah bi mazlumin min al hasid so he has obviously the qalbun ha'im wa huznun lazim so uh, yakfika min al hasid an yakhtam waqta sururika so we find that he says, I haven't seen any Zalim person who is more resembling towards Muslim than Hasid. So, a Hasid person will always have Huzn, which will stick with him. Uh, this is uh, the basically result of the Hasid. Seventh impact and natija, and that's the last one. The last natija of hasad, if someone has the spiritual illness of hasad, is zihab al hasanat wa ghazabullah. And this is uh, the sifat which re makes the hasid resemble with the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. We mentioned a while ago the sifat of the hasid person that he in the light of the hadith of Imam Ali salam, that in his aqwal he will show the muhabbat in his af'al he is similar he, he you know he he hides his enmity which is dual sided behavior similar to the munafiqeen isn't it right but now we are discussing another natija which is very much similar to what we learn about the enemies of Ahlul Bayt that's how the enemies are described so look at what the hadith says about the hasid. Here um, Amir Ramin, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Tal iyyakum wal hasad, fa inna al hasada yaakul al hasanat kama ta'kul al nar al hasad. Al hatab. So keep away from the hasad because hasad eats up the good deeds the way the fire eats up the firewood. So this is how we learn about the enemies and the books of Amir Mumin alayhi salam. If somebody has the hatred towards Imam Ali alayhi salam, the book of Amir al-Mumin alayhi salam will eat up all the good deeds of the person just like the fire consumes the firewood. Also from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, here is the hadith where he says, in al-hasada la ya'kul al-iman. This is, this is very important. Hasad ala yaakul al-iman kama ta'kul al-nar al-hatab. So hasad is going to, is certainly going to eat up the iman the way the fire consumes the firewood. 
so uh, like i said this is this is the the way we learned about the enemies of uh, uh, enmity of imam ali was towards imam ali was salam this is the way the hadith says hubbu ali you know hasanatun la tazur ma'aha sayyatun is it right the love of imam ali was salam is a is a good deed that no no sin is going to harm along with that wa bughdhu sayyatun and his hatred is a sin is a bad deed that la tanfa'u ma'aha hasanatun that along with that no good deed will benefit so this kind of behavior is related to the love and hate of imam ali salam that we learn about the hasad so hasad we can understand the light of these ahadees that a mu'min should not have the hasad it's not something that that is in sync with the iman of the mu'min because if a person has a hasad then his iman will be eaten up by the hasad and he will no longer survive as a mu'min iyyakum an yahsuda ba'dukum ba'dan fa inna al-kufra asluhu hasad Imam Salih Ibn Islam says that keep away from uh, some of you having hasad towards some other because the root of hasad is kufr. So this is a little description about the hasad. Obviously um, we find that in the story of Habil and Qabil So when Habil alayhi salam was given the mawaris of um, of Nabi Hazrat Adam according to the amr and command of Allah not from his own self personal decision upon the command of Allah transferred the mawaris the miras of ilm and uh, you know of nubuwwat towards Habil alayhi salam what happened is that qabil ended up having hasad one of the best examples in this story of his stories of islam is this so qabil ended up having hasad towards his younger brother and he objected on his father that am i not the elder brother and am i not supposed to get the miras of nubuwwat and hazrat adam alayhi salam told him it's not up to me to decide in other words from allah Yeah, Allah commanded me to do that and that's why I did it. That means this was not his personal decision to decide. And then finally it was finally it was settled that you both provide a qurban. That means a qurbani, a sacrifice, give something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that ahad, in those days, uh, uh, the sign of accepting of the qurbani the qurban the sacrifice was that a fire will come and it will hit and burn down the sacrifice so whosoever sacrifice is burned down by the fire coming from allah's behalf his sacrifice is accepted and that's the, this is the alamat so the, you a person would then realize that whether allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting for whom and not accepting for whom so both of them provided their sacrifices qabil provided a very lowly and ready and tast thing there and uh, habil was had his own animals you know he had his own uh, animals that he were you know Uh, taking care of so he provided one of the best animals that he had and the fire came and hit the animal which was presented as sacrifice by habil alayhi salam and that's where we find shaitan comes in and iblis came and did this waswasa in the qalb of qabil you see your sacrifice is rejected by allah So now you know what's going to happen is like this you both will end up having children and the nasl of of uh, of, uh, of the humans will continue from both of you so till the end that means till the end of this world in other words your the entire nasl of habib will feel proud over your nasl 
that their father's sacrifice was not accepted and they, that means Qabil's father, Qabil is the father, ancestor of his nasl, isn't it right? So the children of Habil will feel proud that their father's sacrifice was accepted but your children's father, that means you, Qabil, your sacrifice was not accepted. So the best thing is that instead instead of uh, causing so much pain for your entire nestle and children in the future just kill this habil guy so that your entire nestle will not end up in this pain that was the waswasa the shaitan says this is what we call in ilm al akhlaq as tasweel is that right? By sawwalat lakum and fusukum. Tasweel. Shaitan never ever, Shaitan is not stupid. He never presents his case in a bad and ugly way. He presents his case in a very nice package. You know, with red ribbon, beautifully packed to deceive the people with very sweet sounding slogans. So otherwise people are not going to be deceived that simply. He's not stupid. So he always presents the case. This is how what we call akhlaq we call tasweel. Yani arastan. Yani you, you muzayyan. Making the bad thing appear so good in your eyes. And when the person, the meal and cautions gets fooled because he lacks the taharatul qalb to overcome his desires, so when his damir and conscience get fooled, then he falls prey to the deception of shaitan and he does it. So obviously, uh, he killed his brother and uh, basically he gets the awab of killing the entire humanity. He is the one who taught the humans to kill. Isn't that right? So, this is how hasad can land a person to that kind of kufr and and zawalat and gumrahi. So, this the ni'mats of this dunya, before I come to the end of my speech, the ni'mat and blessings of this dunya are uh, the material blessings of this dunya are not worth, first of all. The metaphysical blessings is what we need to eye on. We need to focus on the ma'nawiyat. That, those are the, 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 the blessings that we need to focus on. If the maddi blessings are uh, something we need to rejoice, then this is what the kuffar and munafiqeen have always had more than us. Isn't it right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not agree with this dunya to become a jaza for a mu'min and did not agree for this dunya to become an adab for the kafir. Whatever is happening is a partial adab. And whatever jaza that some people are receiving are partial mukafatul amal, partial jaza, not completely. Completely, Allah did not agree for this dunya to become a complete place of rewarding and complete place of punishing. So this maddi things of the dunya are not worth that at all. Neither positively nor negatively. Neither as a jaza for a mu'min nor as an adab for a kafir. Amir Lumi had his shirt having several patches on it. And uh, so much that he himself says in Nahdul Balagha, Istahyaytum min raqi'ha. I was having haya and sharm. Istahyaytum min raqi'ha. I had sharm in from the person because when he took the shirt to the tailor to patch another patch over to, you know, to correct the, it was ripping, ripped apart. It was torn. So when he went to the tailor, he was feeling sharm and haya in front of him. So, and a person said to him, Allah tambizuha, why don't you just throw it away? And Amir Mumiyah Islam replied that, uh, go away. In the sabah yuhmad al sura. That means in the morning, the people who are traveling in the night are praised. That means when the morning arrives, then the people who are traveling in the night are praised. 
So Amir Mubi alayhi salam was like this. Just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to patch, uh, you know, he used to fix his own uh, shoe himself, his own cloth himself, sleep on the soil, on the ground, sit with his slaves, eating the food. These are things which in those, if you look at that Arab society of those days, where almost everybody has slaves, and slaves never used to eat next with the next to the masters. In that kind of society, when our holy prophet, which is the superior, most superior messenger, is always sitting with his slaves. This is a very big thing. Uh, you know, obviously prophet freed the slaves. Islam opposes slavery. But what I'm saying is that sitting next to the slaves, prophet always freed the slaves. So he was sitting on a donkey, he used to ride a donkey, and uh, without the saddle. Riding a donkey without a saddle, that was not a tradition. You know, people used to feel bad. How would I ride a donkey without a saddle? And not just that. Yardafu khalfahu. Amir Mubi Islam says in his hadith talking about the Prophet, Prophet used to add another person on the back of the animal behind him. Which is, this is not part of the hadith what I am going to say. This is also another thing that people used to consider as something which is going to decrease my respect. If I allow another person to sit behind my back, obviously the space is less, so I will end up sitting in a tight way, I will not relax on the back of the animal. So people used to avoid having anybody else sitting on their back. But Prophet always used to allow someone else sit behind his back. This is the peak of Tawadu that you can expect. Just like this person was coming from uh, you know, coming from his travel from Juhfa, and he comes and meets with Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and Imam alayhi salam says that you did Jafa on us. In other words, with a madmoon or a I'm narrating. This moment said, Yabn Rasulullah, what did I do wrong on you? He said, Imam said, said, on your way when you were coming, you met a, a Shia, a, a Mu'min person there, standing in the desert, in other words. And he asked you to make him sit behind your back on the animal. And you refused it. You did Jafa on us, Ahl al-Bayt. So if we refuse one mu'min person that we can provide the help but we are intentionally rejecting it. This equals to doing jafa on Ahl al-Bayt salam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us to understand and to practice the ma'arif of Quran and Ahl al-Bayt salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin واخذل الكفار والمنافقين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر واحفظ وأيد علماءنا الربانيين ومراجعنا الربانيين لا سيما الولي الفقي قاعد المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فقع عن الأسراء المسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأشياعه وأتباعه وأعوانه بجاه محمد وآله الطاهرين